Hello everyone, today I'll be taking a look at the SDS Models Indigenous Liveried NR Class Locomotives. We'll take a look at a brief history of the prototypes, as well as what's in the box and some sound functions, as I have picked up a DCC and factory sound fitted locomotive. So, before we get into all of that, be sure to have subscribed and to have notifications turned on so you can keep up to date with everything that I will be releasing in the future. So, with that, let's get into a brief history. The NR class, boasting 120 units, has been the backbone of Australian Railway since 1996. The NRs can be seen today running up and down the country on both freight and passenger services, and I'll certainly get into more specs in a later video, probably when I review the standard NRs, or perhaps I'll do a locomotive profile video, and if that is something you'd like to see, please do mention that in the comments below. But these locomotives, in late 1997, the National Rail Corporation outshot two NR-class locomotives bearing Indigenous design based on the work by Alice Springs artist Bessie Little. The first was launched in Sydney by Cathy Freeman in November 1997, NR30 featuring Aboriginal Dreaming Story, decorated by Bessie after a Wami dot painting showing a snake, bush tucker and a woman's footprints. The second was launched in Alice Springs by Mark Vale in December 1997. Karanga Mankupa. The design depicts the star dreaming story Seven Sisters. Decorated by Bessie, the dot painting shows the travels of the Seven Sisters and their pursuit by the Snake Man. These locomotives ran with this fantastic livery for about a decade where they were eventually repainted into the now Pacific National Scheme. I actually managed to see NR52 a couple of times in the late 90s and in the early 2000s. However, unfortunately, the second time was at the Lismore Railway accident in 2007. Now, I've picked up both locomotives. NR30 is DCC and sound equipped, and NR52 is a dummy locomotive. The production is limited to a total of 660 units across six options and is fully licensed by the artist's agency. Inside the box you'll find the locomotives packed well in the standard blister pack and foam keeping the handrails safe. You will also find a spare set of horns. I once again really appreciate the DCC sound functions being written on the inside of the box rather than on a loose sheet. On to price point. A non-powered unit will set you back $235, a powered DC unit $375, and a powered DCC and sound equipped unit at $495. Keep in mind if you do have a non-powered unit and you want to run it on DCC and you want to be able to use the lighting features, you do need to buy a 21 pin decoder. So let's have a look and a listen to the sound and lighting functions of NR30. Model features, highly detailed, ready to run HO gauge model, precisely tooled plastic body, ABS, genuine KD scale head whisker couplers, separately applied handrails and detail parts, five pole skew wound electric motor and dual flywheels, all wheel drive and electrical pickup, LED headlights, marker lights, number boxes and ditch lights. 
All models come with the standard MTC 21 pin motherboard and the sound equipped models are fitted with ESU Loc Sound decoders. Here's some footage of it hauling my Cision Indian Pacific set around the Australian Model Railway Association Club in Melbourne. Alright, so my thoughts on the model. I reckon they're great. I reckon they look fantastic and they sound fantastic. My only gripe, it's nothing major and it's more on me than anything else, is that the I should have picked up two powered units rather than a powered unit and a dummy unit. I realise you save quite a bit having the dummy unit, although you do have to buy a 21 pin decoder to be able to utilise the lighting functions in it, which I find is a bit of an expense on something that, yeah, it's only made to control lights. Um, the other problem is one NR does not have enough power to pull a full Ascision Indian Pacific set around a layout with some minor to steep grades, uh, like the AMRA layout. 
So that's more on me than anything else. Um, but I think if you are planning on buying one of those sets to run with these locomotives, buy two powered set, two powered locomotives. I also think I should point out that these locomotives are about $70 more expensive than the standard run of the SDS NRs. That's simply down to the paintwork that's on them. I understand that it does require a lot more um, paint pads, I think they say, but I think it is completely worth it. And I do not regret buying these at all. Uh, and they look fantastic. As a, as a display item as well. Now, Ascision are about to release the exact same locomotive slated for early, well, an early 2021 release. I've always found it a bit strange that two of the major model manufacturers in Australia are releasing the same locomotive at about the same time, even down to having almost back-to-back -back ads in the Australian Model Railway magazine. But I guess it doesn't really matter because SDS beat them to it. Um, I am keen to get my hands on some Ascision NRs to see how they look. I obviously won't be buying the indigenous ones as I've already got them, but I think that's something that I will get down the track and I do plan to do a review of those as well. So what are your thoughts on this release? Did you pick up a set of the indigenous locomotives or did you pick up a set of the standard SDS NRs? If you did, I'd love to hear your feedback on it and please just leave it in the comments below. And I'm sure SDS would probably want to hear back as well. I'll leave all the appropriate links in the description box below for SDS, where you can buy them, uh, my social media, my website, and my links to my merchandise if you are interested in picking anything up or just checking out some high-res photos. And of course, if you are new here, don't forget to have subscribed, have notifications turned on, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll be back with plenty more soon. Hooroo.